There are two main types of mitral valve disease. One is mitral stenosis, where the valve area is really narrowed and blood cannot get into the left ventricle from the left atrium because of this. There's also mitral regurgitation, where the valve becomes leaky, so blood after entering the left ventricle from the left atrium backs out into the left atrium and backs out into the lungs. There are different causes of mitral stenosis and mitral regurgitation. The most common cause of mitral stenosis is rheumatic heart disease, while the most common cause of mitral regurgitation is degenerative mitral valve disease. The most common signs and symptoms of mitral valve disease is dyspnea, where patients will present with shortness of breath, especially when they're working out or exercising. Mitral valve disease is most commonly diagnosed with an echocardiogram. This is where an ultrasound probe is placed on the patient's chest, and we get an image of the mitral valve to see if there is stenosis, meaning narrowing of the mitral valve, or regurgitation, where it's leaking of the mitral valve. There are other signs and symptoms associated with mitral valve disease. This includes palpitations and atrial fibrillation when the heart is in an abnormal rhythm, and pulmonary hypertension where the pressures in the pulmonary arteries become to increase. There are different ways to treat mitral valve disease. The first step is usually medical treatment where a patient is placed on a diuretic or a water pill to reduce the volume of blood going through the heart. When patients are not responding to medical treatment, oftentimes we will offer them interventions. And this includes catheter-based interventions, specifically for a mitral valve stenosis, and surgery, where we do replacement or repair of the mitral valve. There are many benefits to mitral valve repair compared to a mitral valve replacement. First of all, in the immediate term, patients have a much lower mortality and morbidity when they undergo mitral valve repair compared to replacement. The mortality and morbidity rate is half of replacement when patients undergo mitral valve repair. Second of all, patients go back to their normal lives after mitral valve repair, and most of the time, the repair lasts a lifetime for these patients and their survival is really the same as patients who have not undergone cardiac surgery at all. At Johns Hopkins, we are a center of excellence for mitral valve repair, which means for patients with degenerative mitral valve disease, we are able to repair them more than 95% of the time. There are many challenges that women face when they're diagnosed with mitral valve disease. First of all, Mitral valve prolapse, which is the most common cause of mitral valve regurgitation, affects women much more than men. Secondly, women are often diagnosed much later in the course of their disease and are offered treatments much later. This means they often have worse outcomes than men, even after treatment of mitral valve disease. For example, the national guidelines for the threshold for intervening on mitral valve disease is often based on the size of the heart. Unfortunately, these size criteria were developed using data mainly from men. So when we use the same criteria for women for indication of treatment, they often have worse outcomes because their disease is much more advanced when treated. Therefore, I encourage women to go to their cardiologist when they're having symptoms, especially shortness of breath, or they have been told that they have a heart murmur. Treating mitral valve disease in women requires that we consider not only the mitral valve itself, but also the life stage of the patient and their general health. We want to repair the mitral valve as much as we can, especially for women of childbearing ages, because this preserves a heart function is much more beneficial for the patients long term. I trained with one of the leading experts of mitral repair in the country and achieved a repair rate of more than 95% for the patients. At Suburban Hospital, we take a heart team approach. 
which means each case is discussed with a cardiologist and the surgeons and cardiologists come up with the best plan for the patient. The patient also participates in the shared decision-making process. After surgery, patients have access to physical therapists and occupational therapists who help with their recovery. We also offer a cardiac rehab program to help patients get back to their normal life as soon as possible.